So today I have a funny story about me and a friend of mine. So a friend of mine is looking to buy a house and wants to have a mortgage of $750,000. And shopping around, he was able to find interest rates of 3%. Um, and he wants to have a mortgage for 30 years. And the question he asked me is, what would the monthly payment on a mortgage like this be? Now, I don't work in finance or anything, but I know there are finance calculators out there and mortgage calculators that'll tell you the monthly payment. But, you know, I really like math and I was just like, I want to kind of figure this out myself. And I haven't really worked with this kind of thing in a long time. So why not? Um, so the balance is P, the principal, and the rate is 3% annually. So divide by 12, look at the monthly rate. I'll call that R. Uh, and there's a 30 year mortgage, it's compounded monthly. So that means that we have a 360 month term. Now we'll call that N. And again, I was like, I'm not even sure how to go about thinking about what the monthly payment ought to be. Um, but at least let me try to do some calculations and then maybe it'll pop out. So um, you have a 750,000 principal. And then at the end of month one, uh, the interest is going to be the monthly interest R that you accrue on the $750,000. So you, you gain a lot of interest. Um, but the percentage is small because it's 3% divided by 12. And then that's how much the mortgage value is going to be. So you have to subtract your monthly payment. That's what I thought to, to figure out the balance that you start with on the second month, right? You get, you have your principal, you get some interest, but then you pay it off, um, M dollars, your monthly amount. So this expression at the end of, uh, month one should be your new balance. And I was like, okay, uh, I don't know where this is going, but uh, so then your starting balance at month two is this entire amount that you have at the end of month one. Uh, so that should be the monthly balance uh, at the end of month one. And you want to multiply that again by your interest. Uh, but the interest gets added on. So it's one plus whatever the rate of your interest is multiplied by that month one balance. Right, so that's after interest. Um, okay, and then we pay M again, the monthly amount. So I guess the idea is I'm trying to get an expression here where I just keep doing this um, and see if there's a pattern and then figure out what that must say about what the monthly payment is. So if you look at that first expression for the balance at the end of month one, it's our principal times one plus our rate. And then we, that's how much our, the balance of the mortgage is at the end of the first month. But then we subtract M for our monthly payment. So I'm trying to get this like in general here. Then we multiply by one plus R and then we subtracted M again. Okay, cool. Um, so if we expand this out, trying to figure out what pattern you get, it should be P times the quantity one plus R squared. And then we subtract M times one plus R and then we subtract M again. Now, I seriously was doing these calculations right beside my friend. And my friend is not someone who works with mathematics much whatsoever. He's a mathematic enthusiast, though. Um, so he was kind of like, this is kind of neat. Let's see where this goes. Um, so this is the end of month two. Um, so we play the same game again. Month three, we write down what we had at the end of month two. That's the beginning of what we have at month three. We multiply by our interest again, one plus r. And then we subtract off uh, this monthly amount that we're paying, which is M. Um, so again, this is this first bracket is the month three start, uh, which is the month two end balance, multiplying by that interest, subtract off the monthly payment that we have. Um, and then I'm hoping we have a pattern here. So we get P times one plus R cubed. Cool. Then we have a minus 1 plus r squared times m, then a minus m times 1 plus r, then a minus m. Okay, so actually, we kind of see a pattern. If you look at the expression for month 3 and month 2, you kind of see a general pattern that's happening. Um, and we can figure out what the balance of the mortgage will be at the end of the entire mortgage, which is the 360 month period. So it should be something like 1 p times 1 plus r raised to the 360 minus 
m times 1 plus r to the 359 minus m times 1 plus r to the 358, etc., um, all the way down to minus m times the quantity 1 plus r, and then minus m. Uh, okay, so it would be nice to like simplify this expression. I'm seeing like sums of powers of 1 plus r here, and we'll be able to find a nice expression for that in terms of 1 plus r compactly. Um, so this is a geometric series with common ratio 1 plus r, but so it turns out that this will be uh, 1 plus r to the 360 minus 1 all over 1 plus r minus 1. But I actually want to like see why that's the case. I know we might have familiarity with sums of geometric series, but I want to show a way to find this sum that like doesn't use the typical kind of geometric series approach and actually thinks about things as polynomials. So if you look at the sum we have, if you factor out the m and let x be 1 plus r, the thing we're working with is x to the 359 plus x to the 358 all the way to x plus 1. If we multiply that quantity by x minus 1 as a polynomial, we get expanding with the first term, 36, x to the 360 minus x to the 359, and then plus x to the 359 minus x to the 358, et cetera, all the way down to uh, the one term, which gets multiplied by x minus, or the x term, which gets x squared minus x, and then the one term, which gets x minus 1. Now, all these intermediate terms cancel out with each other, and we're only left with x to the 360 minus 1. So the polynomial underlined here is x to the 360 minus 1 all divided by x minus 1. And that's exactly the expression that we have um, at our disposal here. Okay, so I thought to myself, okay, this is the end balance at the end of 360 months. But at the end of the, at the, end of the 360 month, your balance should be zero. I mean, you should have no mortgage left. So that means that this entire expression is zero, and that's when it dawned on me, hey, we now have an expression for m in terms of p and r and the number of months. So if we rearrange all of this, we'll get m is, uh, let's see, we'll have p times 1 plus r all raised to the 360, and then uh, divided by um, this term and then multiply by another term. So we're going to divide by um, 1 plus r raised to the 360 minus 1 and then multiply by the denominator we see uh, attached to the fraction with m in it, which is 1 plus r minus 1. Now 1 plus r minus 1 is r, so we end up with pr times 1 plus r to the 360 all over 1 plus r to the 360 minus 1. And so I was actually able to get a number from my friend um, for what his mortgage balance should be. But I actually had more questions about this looking at the formula, which is something that I was really curious about, um, thinking like whether or not the mortgage industry is kind of a little bit of a racket, to say the least. Um, I was really curious about that. So first, let's actually plug in the numbers for this $750,000 mortgage. Uh, and it turns out the monthly payment will be roughly $3,162. And that actually is what the mortgage um, broker that he was working with quoted him. So this thing actually does work. Okay, so the thing I was curious about with this is, like, how much profit are banks making off these mortgages? So the total amount you pay is three sixty dollars times the monthly amount, because that's how many months you pay for. So if I look at the ratio of the total payment over the principal, it's this total amount that we have here divided by P. So that's 360 times R times 1 plus R all raised to the 360, and then divided by the quantity uh, 1 plus R raised to the 360 minus 1. So this is a function that depends solely on R. And so I was curious, like as the interest rate fluctuates, like how many times the price of the house are you paying at the end um, of this entire process. Like if the house is worth a certain amount, 
do you end up paying like 1.2 times the value of the house over the life of the mortgage? Well, I was surprised. It turns out you pay a lot more. So I went on the Desmos uh, ca uh, graphing site and typed in this function as a function of X and looked at its graph. And you can kind of see the graph is, it looks like, a, it doesn't even look like a graph. The thing is you have to zoom in a lot to see. So I, I moved my cursor and looked at these values. So here's what would happen if you have a 10% mortgage. If your interest rate is 10% on a mortgage, you end up paying 3.7 times the price of the house in total when you pay over 360 months. If instead you have a 5%, you get you pay 2.158. So you're still paying twice the price of the house. That's a whole lot of money that you're paying over the life of the mortgage, especially since mortgages and houses cost so much. So I thought, what happens if you change to a 15-year mortgage instead? I'm just curious to see what happens. Um, so here you have a 10% mortgage, you pay about twice as much, and then if it's a 5%, you pay like 1.5-ish um, amount of times the original cost. So still a lot. Banks are making a lot of money off these mortgages, um, but I really just wanted to investigate like what's going on mathematically and was curious. Um, so sometimes, you know, you're just living your life and math pops up in the middle of nowhere and you're curious, you want to play around. This is a cool example of this.